organically. What impression are you trying to make? I think people think people are just gonna come and find you. Who do you want to be sitting at the table with you? You need to go out and find those people. Hey YouTube fam, it's your girl Gladys, aka Is That Your Hair, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. So happy to have you. Tap the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything coming up. And if you've been rocking with me for a minute, what's up, what's good, and welcome back. So today is Small Talk Saturdays. During this time, we discuss various topics that are important to us. For the month of June and July, we've been discussing everything YouTube related. But today's video is going to focus on Instagram. Now, if you haven't checked out some of my other Small Talk Saturday videos, definitely check them out after this video. I've given no-nonsense tips on how to start a channel on YouTube. I've talked about how to increase your engagement on social media. I've also talked about some of my mistakes I've made as a social media content creator. Please check those out because I'm dropping gems and I don't want you to miss it. Grab your basket, check out the video. Trust me, whether you're new to social media or you've been doing this for a while, I'm certain that there's something valuable that you can take away from these videos. Huge shout out to everyone that has been supporting me with Small Talk Saturday. I see you. I really appreciate you. Thank you so, so much. So originally I was gonna talk about how to read your analytics, but I've been getting a lot of questions on Instagram growth. Don't worry, the analytics video is coming. If you're still interested in that, let me know down in the comments. But yes, the main question I hear about Instagram is how do you grow on Instagram organically? How do you get organic growth on Instagram? And as I've been on the Instagram platform, I've definitely learned some tactics and some tools that I'm sure will help you all in growing organically on the Instagram platform. I like to share my experiences and my data, so I will be giving you all that information throughout this video. And I also will be citing a few articles that I think you all should check out, which will be linked in the description box. Look, I know I'm good at teaching, but there are other areas that are reserved for the experts in those areas. And I don't mind seeking them out and coming back to give you all the information. I'm a teacher by day, but your girl is forever a student. Also, I do have a special announcement at the end of this video that will be very beneficial to all of you. Watch to the end because you don't want to miss the announcement. So if you're ready to learn how to grow on Instagram organically in 2020, keep on watching. So when it comes to growing organically on Instagram, my very first tip is to get clear on your vision and then execute. Think about this. What do you want people to think or see when they first come to your profile? What impression are you trying to make? What story are you trying to convey to them? These are the things that you should be thinking about as you are making your Instagram, as you are revising your Instagram every so often because this is what will either make people follow or not. When someone opens your page off the bat, they should know who you are and what you represent. For example, when you go to my Instagram page, when you open it, you see my profile picture, you see my bio and you see what it says here. I'm a content creator and I'm a wig assassin. <laughs> This is what I do, as well as YouTube tips, which I haven't worked into my bio yet. But you see what I'm saying? And it states my subscribers, and it also has my link. It's very clear and to the point. You see my story highlights that do correlate with hair. Very clear, with an appealing picture. And you see my Instagram feed, the first, I would say the first nine pictures, clearly conveys some type of story regarding me as a hair influencer. You need to make sure as well that your vision is strong strong, clear, precise. Think about certain additives that you want people to think to themselves when they see your Instagram. And don't be afraid to compare yourself to others who are already within your niche. I know a lot of people do say comparison is the thief of joy. However, I do think when it's for educational purposes and for market research, it's important to compare to see what is out there, maybe to see how you can put a twist on how things are going, and also just to help you step your game up. Because I know I will look at certain profiles that are within my niche or even in a niche that I am looking into. And I'm like, okay, I like what they're doing. I should implement something like that as well. It actually helps inspire me. So yes, y'all get clear on your vision. Your profile picture, super important. I suggest that you have it on a bright background like I do because I think it just helps it stand out. And also get clear on your aesthetic because that will help you frame how and what you are posting on your Instagram feed. My second tip when it comes to growing organically on Instagram is to create a professional account on Instagram, whether it be a creator's account or business account, and then get very familiar with your insights. 
So y'all, there are three types of accounts on IG. There's personal, which is more so for like people posting for family and friends. And then there's a business account and a creator account. Creator and business accounts are geared towards people who want to grow their accounts for multiple reasons. Normally for business owners, influencers, creators, and the like. I have a creator's account and I do prefer the creator's account because I like some of the flexibility that I get within my account versus the business. I did find an article on the differences between the three accounts that I think explains it very well. It actually included a like one or two things that I wasn't aware of too. I will link that in my description box. Definitely check out that article because it'll help you decide which one that you need. But the key factor when it comes to a professional account is having your insights and looking at them, going over them, and it'll help you curtail your content so that way you know what people are responding to, what they gravitate towards, what you should maybe do more of, the insights tell your demographics. It gives you a wealth of information. So let's just take a look at my insights really quick. You see here, when I open my Instagram insights, I can see if I go here, I can go to my posts and I can organize my posts by so many different factors here, like reach, impression, likes, shares, comments. I can organize them and I can take a closer look to see how they're performing. For example, this post over here, when I organize it by impressions, I see, okay, this post is one of, has gained a lot of impressions for my account size in a short amount of time because I just posted that post like maybe like a week ago versus the post that came second place, I posted that post back in April. So it kind of lets me know like, okay, this post, hmm, I should look at this. Why did this post gain so much attention? What is it about this post that did well? And for me, I would say the picture is a pretty picture, very clear, the coloring against my skin look nice, and the caption told that it was a $10 wig, so I know people were into that. So those are the type of things that you need to pay attention to in your insights. You also need to look at your demographics. You also need to look and see what time your followers are actually on the platform and active. All of these things you can find within your insights. One thing I do like about having a creator account, by the way, is the fact that your inbox can be separated. If you wanna sort super important messages or messages from some of your like influencer colleagues or something like that versus messages from people that you don't know, that is something that I like to do because I'm able to separate people who are reaching out with questions versus people I just normally chat with on a regular basis. So please y'all, I'm begging you, get familiar with your Instagram insights. It will definitely keep you informed on what you need to know. And it's also a good thing to know so that you can share it if you are trying to work with brands. My third tip when it comes to growing organically on Instagram is to go hang out with your future followers. So what do I mean by that? Look at your specific area, your content area, your niche. Look at that as your classroom. You're providing value in some way, shape, or form, but I think people think people are just gonna come and find you at any given moment on Instagram, and that does happen. But I do think, especially when you're a smaller account, you need to go out and find those people. The people that you want to follow you are probably people that will benefit from whatever value you're giving or like-minded people within your niche. And a great way to find these people is by looking at likes, at comments, and on live stream. Let me explain. Think about a person that has a large Instagram account, right? Maybe someone that is within your niche. Let's say that you are within the beauty niche, for example. That person probably gets hundreds, thousands of comments on a particular post. Why not go look and see who is liking that post? You know what I'm saying? Go see who's liking the post, take it a step further, and then go to those profiles. And if you see something that resonates with you, you can like the post from the people. You can also comment on these posts. This is something that I have done sometimes, and nine times out of 10, I end up getting a new follower. Let's say if I am seeking out new people to follow, if I actually like what they're posting, I will like their post, I will comment on it, and normally, they they will like, comment me back, and then start following me. You see what I'm saying? So it should definitely be genuine and organic. I'm not saying to go look through people's likes and just start following random people and hoping they follow you back. No, this needs to be very intentional. Think about people that you actually want in your classroom, <laughs> y'all. Who do you want to be sitting at the table with you? Who do you want to be either gaining value from you or working alongside you as a peer? Those are the people that you should be targeting and you should be bringing into your space. But you can't always wait for it, you have to go after it. The comment section is another place where people like to hang out. Think about a popular creator that you like that posts engaging content. A lot of people will be commenting and talking to you in the comments. That's a place for you to also go in and comment and you know, interact with people. Now don't be rude and start pr promoting people's business on their posts. That happened to me recently and I was just so irritated because 
it's something that happens every so often and I was just like, come on, like for real, we're still doing this in 2020. My thing is interact with the people that are engaging with this popular content creator. You'd be surprised. Some people might look at you and say like, oh, they said something that I really like. Let me go check out their page and they'll end up following you. Or likewise, you might be interacting with someone that you really like, check out their page and want to follow them. To me, this is just another organic way to meet people in the comment section. Another great way to find people is on live. IG live. We all know that's a super huge thing right now. And it happened to me recently. There's a live that I watch every Wednesday by the Maddie James. Love her lives. I love her lives not only because of the content that she's delivering, which is super valuable, but her lives are very interactive. And so I like getting caught up in talking to people and even answering questions because people will be asking questions in the live. I noticed after the live was over, I had like six new followers. I was like, oh. Okay, cool. And it turned out that each person that followed me, I actually liked their content. So I followed them back. You see what I'm saying? So you have to hang out in these spaces where you know the people in that space will be interested in your content. The next time you decide to watch a live and let's say it's a very popular content creator, especially if it's an informational live, get active in the comments. Talk to people as they are talking on the live. I have so much fun doing that now. And you'll be surprised. People will see you. They might like something that you say and they'll end up wanting to follow you. Also, also, quick note on hashtags. They are important. They definitely matter towards your impressions on Instagram. Impressions means the number of people that actually see your post. Normally, my hashtag strategy is using all 30 hashtags and using a mixed bag where I include hashtags that have a very large following, medium size, and small hashtags that are more niche specific. That strategy seems to work well for me. I suggest you do the same. And of course, make sure the hashtags are directly related to your content. Now tip number four is super, super important. And it's actually something that I'm slowly starting to get into myself. Tip number four on growing on Instagram organically is to create shareable content. Shareable content is really just any piece of content that anyone finds valuable, can relate to, and wants to share with others. And we see this all the time, especially when George Floyd was murdered. The Black Lives Movement basically resurfaced and you saw so many different posts from people educating others on what this movement is about, right? Even outside of that movement, I've just noticed in 2020, there has been an insane increase in people using infographics as shareable content. Infographics are basically this. It's a visual that is very eye-catching, fun, and easy to read. That that people normally like to share. Infographics are known to be very visually engaging and also very easy to understand. Now, when I was looking at more information on infographics, I actually found a really great article and it's titled something like 29 statistics you should know about infographics in 2020. It was really eye-opening to see some of the statistics dealing with infographics and how it affects consumers. I'm gonna link the article in the description box. Please check that out, y'all, just to give you guys some more insider information because it gives statistics that definitely validate why infographics are so important. And here are some examples of infographics. I've seen a lot of them through the Black Lives Matter movement. I see them about body positivity. I see so many on Instagram. People love sharing that content because it relates to them. And I think for you, if you're trying to gain more traction to your page, if you want people following you, you should also think of something that's valuable that you can share with others. I think Canva is a great site to use for making these infographics. I also recently started using Adobe Sparks. I made like a quick infographic on Brianna Taylor and I definitely noticed in my insights that this was a post that was being shared. Now normally I don't create shareable content like this, but I noticed when I did, it was definitely being passed around as you can see by my insights. So please consider making these infographics y'all. We're human beings and we like visual stimuli, point blank period. I actually read an article about that. The article is called Studies Confirm the Power of Visuals in E-Learning. Really great article on how visual stimuli affects the brain and how it encourages people to take action. Please check that article out. It's it's also in the description box, y'all. At the end of the day, you need to understand that this is a science. Like social media is a social science. And the more that you can understand what happens behind the scenes, especially when it comes to human behavior, the easier it'll be to implement these tips that I'm giving to you. I think that is something that a lot of people don't say. Like when I watch videos on how to grow on Instagram, YouTube, a lot of people leave out the fact that this is based on scientific research. We need to understand that what causes people to act and engage with people is a scientific reaction happening 
in their brain, honestly. So I really want to challenge you guys to do more research on that. And also with that information that you find out through research, think about how you can utilize that in your own practices. Now we're here at my last tip, tip number five. My last tip to having organic growth on Instagram is to create relatable captions on your posts with a solid call to action. I want you to think about what prompts you to comment on someone's post. Think about it for a second. What posts prompts you to comment. Normally it's a post that sparks some type of emotion. So for example, you might see a picture of a woman and they look really beautiful. It prompts you to say, oh wow, you're killing it. You look so bomb. That's based off of an emotion that you feel inside, right? Also, you have posts that where people are being transparent about something that happens in their lives that you can relate to and that also prompts people to comment. So let me use myself as an example. So I do Woman Crush Wednesday, every Wednesday on IG stories. I have been creating posts to promote that I do that. So last week I did a post on body image and I was just sharing my truth and what I felt about my body image and how I feel like we should be in terms of being body positive. I was so surprised with the feedback I received on that post. Like seriously, people were extremely engaged and I didn't think people would be so transparent in their response. If you look at some of these responses here, I was like, wow. I feel like I might have started something here. You know what I'm saying? Like it made me feel really good to open up the floor where people felt comfortable saying that. And if you look at my insights, that post, even though I made it recently, is definitely a post that is at the top when it comes to the number of comments. So when I look back on that post and I was like, why did that post do well? Like, what was it about that post that caused people to comment? And I realized because my topic, which had to do with body image, was very relatable to people. And because I was transparent about it, in turn, it allowed people to be transparent back with me. So when you are creating relatable content, the engagement will come. And when you ha are fostering engagement on your page, people will see it and the followers will also come. The growth will come. I'm telling you, fair people on Instagram use tactics like this on a regular basis and it's not to say that it's not genuine but it is something that works when you are sharing ideas and experiences that a lot of other people can relate to you're bound to get lots of engagement because no one wants to feel alone in their experience and that's the great thing about Instagram because even though we're all talking through you know the internet world there is a commonality that's being established and it fosters community so when you are creating your post think about sharing more relatable experiences on your feed these are my top five tips for growing organically on instagram Whew. overall if you don't get anything from this video i need you to get this now if you put your pen down pick it back up and and write this down because this is super important y'all ready social media is a social science Social science is a scientific study of humans in society and their relationships with people. So people like me can be giving you tips all day long, but the real questions are, are you studying the science behind what prompts people to make certain decisions? Are you learning the emotional triggers that prompts people to engage with one person's post versus another post? Are you studying how certain colors impact how the human brain receives information? These are the questions that you need to be asking yourself. If the answer to these questions are no, well then I need you guys to start doing more research, seriously. Look, I know a lot of us start off on social media very lost in the sauce, but if you are growing a following, if you're trying to start and maintain a business, if you are trying to sell a product, you have to understand the social and behavioral science behind these practices. If you're willing to become more familiar with human behavior, right, you'll learn how to garnish people's attention. And once you learn how to get your target audience's attention, the engagement will come and then the growth will come. Look, if that wasn't a word, I don't know what is. I just dropped the gem on my damn self. <laughs> I hope y'all wrote that down because seriously, this is something that I do not see in other people's videos. You have to remember that people are human beings and there is a lot of science that goes into the decisions that we make and that definitely plays out on Instagram. So the next time you create that post, I need you to start thinking about these things. Please tell
tell me your thoughts about this video in the comments down below. Let me know which tip helped you the most and please be specific. I'm telling you, all of your feedback helps me create better and better videos. That is why in the comments I will follow up and ask you like what you thought of something because I just really need to know. Your feedback is my own personal qualitative data and that is very beneficial for me doing this series. Now it's time for my special announcement. All right, y'all, so I am now offering one-on-one -on -one coaching for anyone who is interested in growing and prospering on social media. If you need help increasing your online presence, if you need an Instagram audit, if you want a walkthrough of one of your YouTube videos where I tell you specific things that you can work on, or if you just need overall motivation, feel free to book a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me. I've actually worked with two people so far on the low low. <laughs> And I feel good about it. So I'm ready to share it with my YouTube family. So the link will be in the description box down below as well as the pinned comment. I'm going to open the booking for the next two weeks, see how things go with my schedule. And then I will let you know when I open it again. Right now, the times available are between 10 30 AM and 5 30 PM. So if you're interested in growing with your girl and you want some specific one-on-one -on -one feedback that will guarantee you some results, go ahead and click that link. As always, I want to thank all of you for joining me today for a Small Talk Saturdays. Check out my playlist in the description box down below and meet me in the comments. Next week, we're definitely going to talk about how to read your analytics. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye.